Pinterest. Now, a short summary. This is a, an image sharing social media platform. Quite small compared to the other big boys, your Twitter, your Alphabet, and your, your, um, your Meta, and also in relation to the Chinese uh, companies, pretty, pretty small. Um, but anyway, let's get into it. Net margin. Now, this is all that, but <laughs> You know, just some background, just some quick background. You know, Pinterest is still losing money, not making any money. Um, it, it, it's not profitable as yet. So, with company like this, it's not profitable. Doesn't mean it's useless and it has no value. It just means it's still in the early cycle of growth. It's still in the early cycle. Of life and existence as a company. On top of that, you know, considering Pinterest is operating in a very, very, very competitive market, you know, still early on in, in, in its profitability cycle, right? You can live with negative incomes, but the most important thing to establish in a company like this is the path towards profitability. Is there a path towards profitability, or am I as an investor? Just investing in a money pit, an asset laden money pit. So let us first of all determine the path toward profitability. So margins, negative margin, um, massive pop here in 2019, but significant improvement in 2020. All right. So what? Picture does this tell us? All right, let's read more of the other profitability um, analysis. Cost of revenue pop, massive pop in 2019, but I'm trying to in 2020. We're getting costs under control. Degrowth. So, why can we have to consider the fact that we've gotten costs under control? Um, which is very important for companies to lose growth. They just cannot spend, spend, spend for the sake of spending. You don't, you don't spend for the sake of growth. You spend for the sake of profitability and growth. Um, so, okay, that's good. One can live with that. The R&D growth moved, I believe, right there. Um, but again, massive decrease in 2020. So we really look at it with cost control. Left with that, RD as a percentage of revenue. All right, that's a pop in 2019, but I came back down to earth in 2020. Spending quite a lot, you would not mind, um, you would not mind such high spending as long as it's justified. Um, again, it's a company still early on in the growing cycle. So you would expect such high spending, especially on R and D. So sales and marketing, woo, on average, that's thirty eight percent. The industry average is about twenty eight percent. But it's difficult to argue with that compound of thirty eight percent when a company is growing revenue at an average of fifty three percent. So. Yeah, you know, at this stage, such high expenditure sales and marketing, yeah, it looks justified. All right. So, looking furthermore, revenue has grown. I mean, the growth in revenue is a little bit unsustainable. I mean, I don't think you can be growing at a rate of what, 53% on a compound rate per year. But it's still impressive and it shows that even though the company is unprofitable, it's using its resource, I mean using its resources and its platform well enough to generate and grow revenue. Alright? As well as all cost growth. Where costs have been increasing, where costs are a significant portion of sales, 
So they are just a part. Okay. Now the good margins can be attributable to, of course, the increase in cost. Those, I mean, the increase in revenue and the increase in cost where that did happen. So I'm looking specifically as R and D and sales marketing as a percentage of revenue, because they are quite a significant uh, portion of revenue. But that is justified. We grew revenue on top of that, so it is justified in growing revenue. On top of that, we have gotten these costs under control. We have gone to market shows and marketing as a percentage of sales, percentage of revenue has been a decrease in rate. The same can be applicable to R and D. R and D has decreased significantly. Cost of revenue growth has also been increasing, but a decrease in rate. So we've gotten cost under control. So getting cost under control, significant costs justify growth. All of that together has enabled not only the growth in net income, but also the improvement. In the margin. Return on equity is negative because again the company is not making any 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 profits, but it has been improving. You know, it's at negative one percent. So that should just give you an indication that the company is probably two basis points away from profitability. So it's literally knocking on the door profitability, not that far. And that is again justified by the fact that margins have improved. Costs have been under control. Costs have been justified by the fact that revenue has improved, net income has improved due to the fact that margins have improved, revenue has grown, as well as costs are being reeled in, and they are justified. So, where a significant part of revenue is being spent in the form of a cost, that cost can be justified. So the so Pinterest is not growing for the sake of growth sake, it's growing for the sake of growth and profitability. So as things stand, there is a clear path towards profitability. Um, however, the question could be, is it sustainable? You know, considering in 2020, everybody was indoors because of, you know, lockdowns. And, you know, companies like Pinterest and social media, ad-based platform uh, uh, companies were using a lot of them in lockdown because you know we were trying to keep ourselves busy and preoccupied so the question could be is it sustainable and i think that question could be answered in its entirety in the 2021 financials but as things stand i am happy with the path towards profitability uh, however it's still a bit of a risky company to invest in a company that's making no profits negative margins, negative return and equity ROE. Even though it is growing at a very healthy rate, it is improving its net income, it's getting costs under control. Costs are justified uh, by the fact that revenue is increasing and that the income levels are improving. The question is, hmm, is it sustainable? You know, but there is a there is a path, there is a path. It's still a bit of a risky play, you know, and as an investor, you will need to ask yourself a question, are you comfortable taking on this much risk? Okay, now let's move on. I'll pop up that question and see if um, the other analysis and matrices. Current ratio, again, this company does operate in a very asset life heavy industry so you would expect these margins to be pretty good you would expect a uh, oh, very good 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 uh, current ratio now again you know this ratio kind of takes the risk a bit down because what this ratio is telling me read together with the debt equity ratio more on that uh, in a few seconds is that this company is making Pinterest is making a lot of cash and as of 2020 it had something like 1.7 billion dollars in cash and other um, short-term liquid securities so this is incredible you know considering this company is still in the growing phase it's still not making 
any profits, negative margins, but it has a solid and liquid balance sheet that can springboard it, that it can use as a platform to stabilize operations and to basically generate um, future prosperity. So this is very good. So this is this is very very good. Has a very very liquid uh, balance sheet. So in 2020, in 2020, for each current short-term liability, Pinterest had 11.5 liquid assets. So liquid current assets exceeded liquid current liability by a measurement of 11.5. That is awesome. I mean that is just a past you know again a liquid 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 balance sheet shows me it has enough cash on hand to use as a springboard to rapidly expedite the path of profitability and as well as it tells me that this company is not burning through cash that i'm being told by the fact that my debt to equity has significantly improved and that is due to the fact of the high cash it has. Now, uh, a, a lot of this cash and a lot of this cash is probably due to the fact that of the IPO receipts. Uh, but still, I like it. I love it. Has enough cash on hand, a liquid enough balance sheet springboard itself into profitability and it is not taking on any additional risk and that risk is very 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 low so debt to equity means debt is only a measure of 16 percent of the net worth of payments so the dollar of equity net worth has that only represents 16 percent or 16 cents Oh, yeah. So this is very good, you know, it shows me that it's not just burning through cash, you know, just borrowing, 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 and not knowing what to do with that money. It has a liquid balance sheet and low liabilities. I love that. And I love that. This shows me that this is a very, very, very strong company that, that has a strong balance sheet, a strong balance sheet, a, a liquid balance sheet that doesn't have a lot of credit risk to it. Good. Now the operating margin, so the cash from operation margin, looking at our liquidity, looking at our uh, cash liquidity, significant improvement, still very, very poor. Um, it's still very, very, very poor. Uh, <laughs> my goodness, it's poor. Um, man, uh, however, it's a positive. So what this tells me, 2020, the company, well, from 2019 actually, the company has been generating cash from its operations. So for each dollar of revenue it makes, it converts two cents or two percent into actual cash from operations. Good. I mean, it is bad. I mean, pretty mediocre, but it's good. I mean, it, it does show you that at least. It's actually making cash from its operation. So the path towards profitability is very near. It's still taking a lot of risk though. Still negative margins, it's still 0.06% now 2% of cash margin. It's taking taking on a lot of risk. But the good news is it shows you that the company is very, very near towards the path of profitability. Sufficiency of cash flow. Below one, so what this tells me that the company does not have enough cash flow to pay debt, reward shareholders, and um, buy investing or well, allocate fund to invest in operation doesn't have that much. But again, remember we are looking at the path towards profitability. So is it at least a positive? <laughs> you know, I know it's. it's not a very high bar to cross, but is it? Yes, it is at least a positive. There has been significant improvement over the years. So, reading the, the cash 
flow more uh, the cash flow ratio the cash flow analysis the company is you know its operations are liquid they're at least making some money. it doesn't have sufficient money but that's okay because i mean it, it raised a lot of money in its ipo which you can see it's been carried over you know it's been carried over over the years and it's not having to borrow a lot so you know that IPO has enabled the company to have a strong liquid balance sheet without borrowing, even though it's not it's not generating enough in my view, cash from operations and it does not have sufficient cash to fund operations. That IPO war chest was enough to keep the company solid and liquid, as well as less of a financial risk in terms of adding more to debt. So what's positive is that yes, there's a path towards profitability. You know, the company's not burning through cash. You know, I mean, 2018 was burning through cash with a negative sufficiency of cash flow, but now it's not necessarily burning. I mean, still has a hole in its operations, but it's not burning through cash in the form of a negative. So it's making money from its operations. It does have some cash flow, not a lot, not nearly enough, but it does have some to show that does not need to borrow too much does not need to always go and ask you know cap in hand to share all this for money it did it once with an ipo that money is plugged the hole it's not resulting in adding on significant debt it's clearly has some liquid operations <clears throat> it does make some sufficient cash flow not nearly enough but it does make something so Overall, yeah, it's a risky trade, but in this company, you're not necessarily investing on the fact that it is profitable, you're investing on the fact that in the long term, you know, looking at our analysis, looking at its profitability, looking at its balance sheet, looking at its uh, cash liquidity, it is near the path to profitability. So basically, you know, investing in a company that's closer towards the path of profitability. Not paying any um, dividends or doesn't have a buyback yield makes sense. Not making any money. It's not making, it's not making anywhere near yeah. enough money to do that. So that's understandable that you can live with. That. I mean that you do understand because you're not making any money. So you do expect it in the in the short to medium term. You do expect that the company will not return. You expect the company to not return anything to you. It's going to use all of its cash. It's going to use all of its uh, uh, liquid uh, resources to basically expand and grab on to its market share. The P ratio, remember, it's not making any progress. So this P ratio is not necessarily price to earnings, but price to sales. So we're valuing the expensiveness, the affordability of the stock on a price to sales basis. So we're looking at for each dollar you invest so, so for each dollar of sales you make how much are you paying so you're paying 23 times so you're paying 23 dollars for each dollar of sales that the company makes which is quite high <laughs> you know for, for a risky company uh, again you know, it depends on your personal view as an investor you know, do you think 23 sales is high or not i think it is i think it is you know i mean don't get me wrong you know there is a good story about pinterest you know there's a good story you know the, 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 there is a valid case for bullishness the fact that it is near towards profitability it's on the path of profitability but i'm taking on a lot of risk when other companies don't give me as much risk and give me a lot more. And so, based on that, I mean, there is a case for bullishness, but I feel like the the fact that I'm taking on way too much risk that that for a company that's not yet making any money or not making any way enough money to fund its operations, that's a bit of a myth. Um. The stock price, whoa, man, it has just been beaten. And that is mainly because you can see this. The beating happened here. 
in 2021. And that's when it became clear that, well, you know, people aren't spending as much time on their devices on the web as they were um, back in lockdown in 2020. You know, as the vaccines became available, as, you know, more and more countries and regions started to control uh, the spread of COVID. It became very clear that people are spending less and less time and so people are more uh, free, people feel more empowered, people feel more safe to um, go outside. So, and you've lost half of your value. I mean, it's been a bit of a wealth destroyer, but again, high risk, high reward. I mean, you took a high risk event in, in investing in those stocks. So, you know, there's also, you can get high rewards, but, you know, the high reward also comes with the high risk, and this high risk is the 54% decline, which is the value. Okay, enough about Pinterest. <laughs> 